Hey, Rick Tobin, the hotel broker, who's in the kitchen, and now Fort Lauderdale Beach Happenings. I am here at a relatively new restaurant uh, with a guy named Christian, who I'm going to introduce to you in a second, who's the chef and uh, 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 pretty much does a lot of stuff here. I'll tell you all about that in a minute. We are at Maison du Crab. Did I pronounce that correct? Yeah, perfectly. <laughs> okay. Perfectly. And they're on Federal Highway. The Roselli building. Roselli building, exactly. And uh, there's some construction out front. They are open. Don't worry about that. Brand new place, very upscale. I, ju I just came in here for my first time. But tell us a little bit about the place. Well, this is a place that you know, just started on uh, the 20th of uh, this month. That's the first time we opened we did the ribbon cutting. And um, I mean, we've been having a blast since we just started with this project. I got into an amazing group of. Uh, businessman and I think they, they gave me the whole confidence to open this place create so, a menu what did you do before what's your background okay I'm I come from Mexico all right I'm Mexican born and raised in Mexico my mom's American my dad is French okay I'm French it's French okay. yeah so I've got a big mixture happening in there um, you know but uh, and I pretty much traveled the whole world with the kitchen industry and the hospitality industry i've been in australia i've been in spain i've been in france wow um got to go to thailand for a few months as well i got to cook for under a couple very very big michelin star people around my time so you know i've, I've been what i try what we're trying to bring here is bring all this things that i've been learning across and around time and right. develop something just for here, something that is just unique for, for, for Fort Lauderdale, for South of Florida, you know? We're just trying to create something like that. So you've been all over. How'd you get into a restaurant? How'd you get into cooking? Well, I'm gonna be honest. Okay. I didn't know what to do with my life. Okay. <laughs> I was a big party boy. Okay. When I was uh, younger. Um, and my parents were on my neck. What are you gonna study? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So uh, my best friend at the time went to the culinary school in Mexico. So he said, Christian, come on over with me. Let's do the exam. You'll take your parents off of your neck for a while. <laughs> okay. So I go, okay, let's see. And I went over there and, um, and all of a sudden I got this passion for something. Nice. You know, and, and, and I was very, very, very uh, fortunate to, my mentor over there, his name is Marc Beau, amazing French chef. He worked under Escoffier for a long time. Wow. Right, so we're talking about big leagues over there. And this guy uh, took me under his wing. And he said, I think you've got potential. I think you can do a couple of things, you know. Come on over with me. And he took me under his wings and he took me to the working part, the process and everything. It was just amazing, amazing, because I was getting up at 3 30 4 o'clock in the morning going to the hotel work then at four o'clock i finish and go to college and study and and he was just making sure that i had what it took to live and thrive in this industry which is a heavy industry long time long hours and, and this is not an easy business no it isn't uh, i don't think there's any b easy business but this is a, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. It's, it's a lot good. of time standing up. It's a lot of uh, stress. You know, all of a sudden you get 120 people happening over in one second, right? Right. And within 10 minutes time, you get 120 people, and you got you know that little rush. That's where I found my little uh, my guilty pleasure. Uh, that that always amazes me. You know, I I grill out a lot myself, and but I'm cooking for one or two or four. And when you guys are turning stuff out for a whole restaurant, you know, I have a lot of admiration for well, look, the work involved. We open at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, um, but I have all my team since 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay. That, that's how much it takes to get 150 people outside the front door, you know? So, so you, you made your way around to the restaurant business. And that, as a realtor, I get people that come to me quite often and say, you know, my wife makes a great lasagna, we're thinking of opening up a restaurant. And I tell them, no, no, there's, there's a lot more to it than that. Any advice to somebody like that? Well, look, if it is a passion thing, go and get it. Okay. You know, I, it's like everything in life. You don't, you don't stop learning, right? Right. You just keep on going and you keep on learning on a daily basis. And then you can get, 
you start getting better and better, and you can get better ideas or better mise en place things. So that person that cooks amazing at home can actually get to do it one way or the other. But in a nice restaurant. But it might not be so much fun when it's a job no. and you got employees and you've got it's, leases it's and you've got being, marketing. Yeah. It isn't. It isn't because, look, it's not just the kitchen who's involved, you know? You have the front of house, you have a team that has to know how to sell what, you have, what you're doing at the back and understand what you're doing, right? right? So they can sell it properly. We have a team at the bar that, you know, I, I sat down and developed the drinks with them so it can go specially with my food. And then you have, you know, the marketing team and then you have the management team and then you got the numbers at the back, you know, that you have, I mean, it's not. And you assembled that staff and, and I don't know, I'm sure you know a lot about this area, but this is probably the hardest time in the history of the world oh, believe to, a staff, to start a restaurant, to assemble staff, get people working, get people to show up. That's all not easy. It is not easy. But luckily enough, we've had um, an amazing staff coming in. Okay. We had a good run with that. I mean, we've had our ups and downs, which is normal when you're opening any kind of business. But you know, we've we've managed to arrange a very good core muscle staff. Okay. And that is where you know where I feel comfortable because I trust my people at the bar, I trust my people at the front, and I trust my teams over here. And that is just given us a good run. Okay. So. What's your, let me put you on the spot here, twist your arm, see if I can get them to give away a secret. What's your favorite recipe? My favorite recipe here would be our lamb tajin. What? Say lamb, that again. Lamb tajin. How do you spell tajin? T-A-G-I-N-E. Okay. All right. This is a Moroccan style uh, dish. Okay. Um, this I learned in Spain because I used to work for a couple of Moroccan people. And, okay. Um, so I started, you know, getting where I wanted my dish to be. Right. And, and at the beginning, first people didn't really, you know, they, they weren't really into understanding what it was. And now I'm selling, I don't know, 35, 40 dishes of those in, in one night time. So how do they, do they find you, your waiters, your waitresses, tell them about it? Well, I, have, to... I, I, I do a couple of uh, work groups with my waiters. Okay. On a weekly basis. Okay. So how to sell one thing, how much I need of this sold out, and if you sell this amount, I'll get you a couple of bottles from the bar, you take okay. them home, you know, that kind of thing. Good, good. Look, you know, we were just talking about staff and that kind of thing, you know? Right. We always have to take care of them. That's the core. That's, that's how we can do something. Beautiful. So, I mean, owners did a lot of money. Investors put a lot of money. I've been putting a lot of time into this. But we're nothing, we won't have that staff happening. No. And how, how important is, and I'm sure I, it's a stupid question, I guess, but the equipment, the, uh, the oh, kitchen important. set up. The... It is very important. Um, look, that is what's going to give you a service with that ease. Okay. You know, because you got to go in one way, you got to go out one other way. Food has to come in from one side if your fryers are not in the correct spot, you know that kind of thing. And if you, and if you don't get the correct equipment, it can be difficult, and it will be very difficult, you know. Um, but look, I have I work for an amazing group of investors. Okay. I have the, my back cover and and whatever I ask. All right. Can can you uh, can you give up? Is is there a big picture? You can open more restaurants. Is this number well, yes. one? Or is this... this is number one. Uh, we're already uh, looking around down in Miami. Okay. Um, and we have a couple of things happening in DR as well. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Very yeah. interesting. It's a big group of, uh, we want to become a, bit, a good group here. I mean, uh, South Florida has a couple of very amazing, good hospitality groups. Plus, we've incubated in this area so many chains that have uh, become... Exactly. Big uh, exactly. Burger Fi in Lauderdale by the Sea. Burger Fi number one is in there. Uh, Anthony's Coal Fire Pizza down there. So, yeah, this area has been terrific for. And I think we're in a good time right now. After everything that's been going on in the world and everything that's been happening, you know, I think we're in a very good time to renovate everything, redo things, rethink how are you going to get to do again, you know, big corporations with restaurants, you know, what I know by being so long in this industry is that a lot of them are actually starting to shut down. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. And I've always been, you know, like, I always, they tell me no, and I go, yes. Right, right. right? So that's where I'm going. I want to go, and, okay, so if people are shutting down, there's a gap for us. You know, I've learned myself that people say, what's the economy doing? What's the real estate market doing? And I tell them that, you know, when I work hard, it, the economy's really good. And when I don't work hard, the economy sucks. Look, so I get you 100%, you know. Um, um, I understand when there's a problem, it's up to you to see how you find it out. And, and when I've gone through all these, uh, you know, money problems, COVID, you know, and recessions and blah, 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 that's when it's been the best time for me. I love it. I love so it. we're out there just having a good time, having fun and trying to get this happening. And I tell my kids, I say, you know what, when you have an issue, it's easier to change yourself than the rest of the world. Of course. Of course. So. It's, a part of, it's about evolving. Yes. It's about evolving and getting to be a better businessman, a better chef, a better person. And, you know, where we're at right now is where we have to be. That's what okay. we have in front of us and just get the best out of it. I love it. So we'll put in the comments your hours and the address and all that. Anything else you want to say before we wrap well, this up? Well, I wait up? for you guys over here. Um, you know, I want to appreciate you uh, being over here and giving me this little spot. You know, I appreciate that very much and uh, hope to see you guys around. My pleasure. And I just, uh, I'll give one, one, one uh, pitch for, I met Christian at a Fort Lauderdale uh, Chamber of Commerce event. And uh, uh, I urge you, if you're in the chamber, if you're not in the chamber, support your other uh, chamber members, support local businesses, come on by. They're in the Roselli building. If you've been in Fort Lauderdale a while, you know where that is. We are just north of, uh, what, north of the bed? What's the address? What's the 3485 exact North Federal Highway. Three, four, well, we'll put that in the comments, but you can put that in your, in your GPS and uh, come on by and have a great meal and support a local business and uh, support a guy who's been like NATO all over the world here. So we'll see you around. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao.